I can't even talk. All of our <laughs> YouTubers, Wave Church onlineers, and Facebookers. Facebookers. I love it. I like that we're giving them names now. Yes, yeah, I just came that. to me. Also, so. if this is your first time tuning in, yes, I must say you've chosen a great Sunday to join yes, because it's absolutely. Easter Sunday. Jesus is risen. Yeah, he is everyone's risen dressed people. to the nines, yes. celebrating a beautiful Sunday, and yes. I'm excited to be in church. Let's see who do we have here. Christine, welcome. Carla, yes. Robin. Oh, the Shook family. We have Carl Hello. watching from Pakistan. <gasps> no way. Oh, yes. Where? Really? Where? From, he's from the U in the U.S. Embassy. Oh, my oh, gosh. Wow. And maybe Jer awesome. from Finney. Yeah, Jerry from Finney. Jer from Finney. And maybe Courtney from Virginia Beach. Courtney. 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 Shout out, Courtney. If you're watching, girl. Sister, sister. <laughs> you better prove it and put a little comment <laughs> yes. in the chat box because I'm going to be checking. <laughs> Let's see if Courtney oh, pops Jared's up. watching from church. I mean, from, from work. church. <laughs> from church. <laughs> watching from church. Okay, yes, let us know where you're joining from. And it's not too late. We have three minutes and 45 seconds until yes. the service kicks off. Also, yes. Robin's so, watching from Alabama. Alabama. Awesome. I have Tennessee in the house. house. Tennessee, I have them winning in my bracket. <laughs> yeah. And also, I'm winning. Tennessee, <laughs> but y'all aren't the only 10 I see. Oh, oh that was good. I was with it. I don't All know. right, as you're sharing where you're watching from, um, let us know what your plans are for today. Yes. Yeah. Are you going to do a brunch? Lunch. Are you going to do lunch? Are you going to do dinner? What are you guys doing today? We're doing late. Brunch. Yeah, but oh, it's late, like late. Brunch. Okay. So you know. time of the are you guys day going out? Late. Staying at home. home. Staying at home. Okay. Leslie is cooking. She is Ooh. cooking. She's been cooking. And I will be sitting and relax. <laughs> yes. And guess what? We're definitely changing into. This is our next question. Yes. yes. Next question. I'm changing definitely into my comfies changing. as soon as I get home. Yes. But that, this is comfy. Yeah. yeah, but I want the sweatpants. Yeah. I literally right. have a bag in my car. I brought like leggings, a are big t-shirt. Go I'm to going to my parents' house. Oh, yeah. And your mom's they are. Cool. Well, they. Did Mission Barbecue? Okay. Ooh. <laughs> Not the I was catering getting ready to stutter, but catering yeah, that Easter. is so smart. That is yeah. smart. She didn't feel like you guys are doing today. <laughs> are you celebrating with friends, family? Look, I'm just gonna put it out there. I still don't see a comment from Courtney in I Virginia know. Beach. Mm. Maybe she I will yeah. say she's a little bit older. She may not fully understand no, how to do the chat. No, she probably is honestly trying to figure <laughs> out how to do the chat. Do yeah. I did, I did think okay. that. You know. Yeah, but we still love her. Also, if you have a boomer in your life, give us a clap emoji. <laughs> we do love Give us a clap emoji. I, I'm not always the best with technology, so I have a lot of patience for it. Um, guys, I have a very important question. Yes. Do you or do you not still do an Easter egg hunt? Oh, oh. Great and I question. need. I want the online. Please let I us do know not. now. Are What's you guys the age, still the cut Easter age. egg hunters? Yes. Okay. So <laughs> quick story. I think I told it last time I hosted okay. leading up to Easter. But anyways, my mom used to come down when Courtney and I were still in college and after, and we would do an Easter egg hunt. Love but it. But with cashola. Love in it. The yeah. Okay. okay cash egg. Let's Instead go. Of candy. Now I'm very competitive, so I was like giving Courtney an elbow, <laughs> kicking her out to find the Easter eggs, and I always won. Okay? That's the Easter spirit. <laughs> So I should have been able to keep all the money that I found. Yes. Correct? <laughs> well, no. My mom made me split it with Courtney. Oh, half my half. gosh. What's up with I that? I will say it's probably like a good, grown adults, you know? That's probably a good parenting technique, but yeah. also parenting, as a child. I was like 25. <laughs> you still need All right. It, don't oh, mean to on. cut you ladies off, oh, yeah, but I've got to head out. I'm going to be singing. You guys, you are in for a treat. It's yes. going to be so good. Praise and worship. So lean in. Thanks, y'all. Yes. Bye, Justin. Also, I just want to give a quick shout out. Carla, we just saw your praise report that your son-in-law made it home safely oh, from deployment. Amazing. And he's oh, he's back at Wave today? To, yes. Which oh, is let's so turn around exciting. and give him a wave. Carla's son, if you're here. Son-in-law, somewhere out there. Hey there. We are so happy amazing. to hear that. That is so beautiful. And back for Easter Sunday. How special. Back for Easter Sunday. Also, I know you guys are confused. I'm not singing this morning, okay? They... 
they did ask me, but I said, I want to stay with my online church. I'm oh, not leaving yeah. my oh, online church. they asked you. <laughs> they oh. asked me to leave, and I, I said, no way. Okay. Shout out Tao on YouTube. Wow. We are so happy that you're watching. From Punta Gorda, Florida. Okay. I love it. Sounds like it's a Gorda place to live. A Gorda place to live. <laughs> well, guys, we are so close to starting. Oh, so yes. whatever you have to do to get ready, stand to your feet. Even though our screen tells us to be seated, but you're That's at home, true. so you can do whatever That's you true. want. Stand There's to no your rules. Feet, grab a seat, um, and happy Easter. We love we you love guys. We love you guys so much. It's going to be a great, great Sunday. Yes. And we'll see you next Sunday. Yeah.
beautiful day. You know, there's a, some people love to just try and curse the darkness. That's not me. I'm a guy that believes in lighting a candle. And if we can just make sure that Jesus is alive inside of us, others will know. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? Well, listen, you didn't come to church alone, but there's plenty of people you've yet to say hi to. I challenge you on this Easter Sunday morning to try to find at least four different people that you didn't come to church with. Before you sit down, just go and say hi to someone. We're going to get all the young people to go back to their seats. Just try and find four, not five, not three, but four. If you're sitting down already, you didn't say hi to someone. Come on, tap somebody on the shoulder. We're going to keep moving with this service right now. And how many know the message of Easter isn't just something we just celebrate once a year, but the message of Easter is no doubt the death and the resurrection of Christ. But let me tell you what the ongoing message of Easter is. He still saves. He still heals. He's still building his church. Can anybody say amen? Let me show you what this looks like. This is after Jesus died. This is after Jesus was resurrected. And the Bible says on this particular day, which is not long after the resurrection, it was the day of Pentecost. And Peter jumps up and he's telling people about the risen Savior, And he's challenging them to put their faith in Christ. Christ who died. Christ who resurrected. And listen to the question they asked Peter. They were so moved by his words. I want to show you the power of the ongoing work of Christ's death and Christ's resurrection. They said... What must, the Bible says, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do now that we've heard this? And listen to what Peter said. Peter said, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you too shall receive the Holy Spirit. I couldn't think of a better day than on Resurrection Resurrection Sunday to see people get baptized. People whose hearts have been cut by the reality of who Christ is and their awareness of their need of a Savior. And so we got to Number of people getting baptized right now. Let's head on over there right now. Give these people a hand.
Amen. Anybody thankful to be in church on Easter Sunday? It's powerful. You are reminded of a moment in Scripture where Mary, she was weeping at the tomb of Jesus because Jesus had died and then the tomb was empty. She's trying to figure out what's going on and then Mary has an encounter with the resurrected Jesus in person. She has this conversation with Jesus, and and I love what she does. She runs back to the disciples, and one of the first things she says with with passion is, I've seen Jesus. I've seen Jesus. And my prayer, our prayer today is, is that it wouldn't just be a nice service, although we hope, anybody love our creative team, our worship team, our media team? It's nothing without Jesus. And our prayer today is that no matter who you are, maybe you've been a Christian for 40 years, maybe this is your first time in church, you're not even sure if you believe in God yet. My prayer and our prayer is that you could walk away from church today simply saying, I've seen Jesus. I didn't just hear about him. I didn't just see somebody else see him. I saw Jesus. I've had friends who've come to church and they say, Josh, if I go to church, the the walls are going to cave in. Friend, the good news of this gospel is is that that's actually not going to happen. But what might happen is the ceiling might open because heaven will open because of the good news of, of this gospel. And no matter who you are, this is important today. No matter who you are, where you come from, Jesus, he wants to meet with you. He loves you. Amen? I've got praise reports, prayer requests in my hand every week as a church family. We pray. And we pray with faith. I love here, every, almost every single week, somebody at our church just writes down and, and, and asks us as a church to pray and be thankful for our military, our military families. We love you. We honor you. I know there's many watching online. Somebody's thanking God for their church family. Somebody's thanking God for the family they found in their community group. Somebody's thanking God. One of our rural youth students got water baptized today. I love that. Somebody here. I love this, uh, an amazing young married couple in our church were believing to have a baby. They just found out they're expecting a baby. It's good news. Somebody here thankful they've been, they were sick, they've been healed. Somebody here also thankful they were told that it was impossible uh, to become pregnant. Another amazing married couple in our church, uh, and, and, and the doctors are saying it is a miracle pregnancy. They found out that they're having a baby. Our God, he's, he's more than able. I've got prayer requests in my hand, people in our church family just asking us to come alongside them and stand with them and pray with them and trust in Jesus. And the good news is if we serve a God of miracles today. So I wonder before we pray, if you have sickness in your body, you have pain in your body, I've got faith that people are going to be healed on Easter Sunday today. Anybody else got just a little bit of faith? So I wonder if you're comfortable, if you have pain or sickness in your body, maybe you stubbed your toe on the way to church today and your toe hurts. Maybe you've been given a a, a serious diagnosis from a doctor, but if you need healing in your body, could you just lift your hand today just so I know who to pray for? Amen. Hands going up all around this place. We're going to pray together as a church family. I wonder, church, if, if you know the person close to you, why don't you stretch your hands towards them? Let's begin to pray. Come on, church, let's begin to pray together. Come on, let's begin to lift our own faith. Jesus, we thank you on this Easter Sunday. God, that you're more than able. You've already done enough. We thank you that you are a good God. Every week you remind us that you work good in all things. Holy Spirit, right now, Holy Spirit, right now, we thank you for healing. By your stripes, we are healed. We thank you for the power of God today. Healing. Healing in the name of Jesus. Miracles in the name of Jesus. Sinuses to be cleared. Tendons and ligaments to be mended. God, for cancer to shrivel up and die in the name of Jesus. For tumors to disappear in the name of Jesus. We thank you. God, we thank you. And everybody said? Come on, this is Wave Church. Everybody said?
Amen and amen. Well, I know we've already said hi to everybody, but why don't, before you take your seat, find somebody that you didn't say hello to. Give them a church high five, a church side hug. Real youth and kids, you're gonna stay with us for just a moment. If you've already taken a seat, why don't you say hello to your neighbor? Maybe turn to your other neighbor that you just ignored, say hi to them. I want to welcome our online campus again. We love you. You're part of our service today. Hey, if you're new to church today, uh, maybe it's been a while since you've been to church. Maybe it's your first time to church. The good news is, this is really important. The good news is, is we are really glad that you're here. But more importantly, God is really glad that you're here. Amen. Somebody had their Red Bull this morning. Can I get an amen? This is important to understand that God is actually smiling at the fact that you're in church today. And if you're newer to church and you'd like to find out more information of who we are as a church, or you'd like to meet our team, there's a number on the screen. You can text that, uh, text that number on the screen. There's connection cards in the seat in front of you. Uh, we love to meet and connect with you. And, and here's, here's, here's what's also important to understand is that we are not just a crowd on Sunday. I love that we gather on Sundays. It is essential. It is the way that God intended uh, his house to be, his church to be. But God also designed and intended us to be in a family and community. And what I love about our church and the church is we're not just a crowd on Sunday, but we are a church that does life together. Can I get one good amen? And uh, we'd love to help you discover how you can call this place your church home and your church family. And uh, after service uh, for everybody, and especially all of our families, we'd love for you to stick around after the service. I think we got a map just to show you. We've got a lot of fun things planned. We're gonna head over to the pavilion, which is right over this way. We'll have a bunch of our team out front with signs just to direct you where to go. We got a lot of fun things planned. We got an Easter egg hunt planned for all the kiddos. We got a hayride. Uh, we've got uh, face painting, balloon animals. We also have uh, a petting zoo, which I think is more for me and the adults than it is for the kids. We got a food truck so you can buy lunch, but I encourage you after service, grab your kids, take a photo, the photo booth in the lobby, head out over there after the service. Amen? Before we dismiss all of our WAVE kids, all of our Royal Youth and we hear from Pastor Steve, we're just gonna come around our offering. I cannot think of a more appropriate Sunday to be generous than on Easter Sunday. You know, I mentioned this in our Good Friday service and I want to mention it again today, there's a scripture in God's word that says, God loves a cheerful giver. I don't know about you, but I'm not always a cheerful giver. Is it just me? Sometimes I'm a reluctant giver. But you know what I've found is as I follow Jesus, the longer that I follow Jesus, the closer that I get to Jesus, the more that I can't help but be thankful and almost excited to give. You know, I believe one of the trademarks of the church shouldn't just be generosity, but there's this gratitude and almost this excitement to be generous with every area of our lives. I would suggest the church should almost confuse the world with how excited we are to be generous. And when the world asks us, why is it that you are, are thankful to give, that you're excited to give, and the response is simple, oh friend, you, you just don't yet know what God has given me that God has given me everything in his son, Jesus, his grace, his love, and his mercy. We serve a generous God. Can I get one last good amen? amen. So church, on this Easter Sunday, on this Easter Sunday, I, I pray that we don't just give, but can we give with gratitude? Can we give with a simple, God, thank you. Thank you for what you've done for me. Thank you for what you continue to do for me, amen? Well, the giving options are on the screen. You can text to give. You can give online. You can give through the Wave Church app. There's envelopes in the seat pockets in front of you. In just a moment, we're going to pass buckets. You can place those in there. And as well, you can put that connection card in that bucket. Why don't we pray over our offering today? Jesus, we thank you. Holy Spirit of God, we thank you for the good news of this gospel. We thank you that we get to reflect your character today and being generous. We thank you for your generosity, your kindness towards us. God, I pray that you bless the gift and the giver. And everybody said, 
Amen. As the buckets come your way, don't forget, put that connection card in there. Check out the screens for what's coming up in the life of Wave Church this summer. Hey, church. Summer is right around the corner. We have something exciting in store for kids of all ages. First, join us for VBS kicking off this summer for elementary age kids. Your child will make new friends, have unforgettable memories, and will have a blast learning about Jesus through Bible lessons, worship, and games. It's 100% free, but signups are limited. So register your child today. Here at Wave, we also have a thriving kids ministry called Wave Kids happening every Sunday. Our team is passionate about giving your kids a Sunday service perfectly catered to their age range. They will experience great teachings, fun games, and have big encounters with God. We hope your son or your daughter can join us this summer. We also got your middle and high schooler covered with Royal Youth happening every Wednesday. These nights are filled with community and centered around Jesus. Also, summer camp is one of the major highlights of the year for us, and it wouldn't be the same without your young person. It's gonna be an incredible experience where we get to unplug for a few days and truly encounter the presence of Jesus. There'll be so many fun things to do, and we have multiple services planned where you'll find anything from insane tribal wars to powerful praise and worship, inspiring preaching, and everything in between. I'm believing this will be our best camp yet and that God will do something new in your young person's life. The early bird rate ends April 14th, so don't wait and sign them up. For more information about this and everything else happening at Wave Church this summer, visit us at wavechurch.com or text SUMMER to 55444. All right. Are you there? I'll try that again. All right. It's Resurrection Sunday, church. It's no ordinary day. It's no ordinary day. This is a holy day. This is a day for the Christians who love Jesus to be excited. I mean, we should be excited all the time, but if ever there's a day to be excited, it's today. It was Friday. Friday was a dark day, but Sunday is today. Can you say amen? I want to read to you a portion of what was leading up. Oh, I didn't dismiss the kids. I thought you were going to do that. Goodness me, I'm going to do everything around here, I'll tell you. This guy just slackens off all the time. So, kids, you are dismissed as well as royal youth. Give them a big cheer. Come on. There's a lot of them. They're all over the building. Give them a big cheer. Come on. They're going to hear the message of Easter. They'll be allowed to paint eggs. Christian-themed eggs. Some of you get that. Matthew 26. This is a a narrative that is right before the crucifixion of Christ. It's a compelling narrative, and I don't know. It's one of those moments that was probably, for me, one of the most cutting. You know that verse I read before? When they heard this, their hearts were cut to the core. This one cuts me. This one cuts me on so many levels. I want to give you just one dimension where it cuts me. Now, Peter was sitting out in the courtyard. Jesus has been arrested. And a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before all of them. I don't know what you're talking about. And then he went out to the gateway. Another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, this fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied it. This time, not just denied it and said, I don't know what you're talking about, but with an oath. I'm telling you, I give you my word. I swear to you. An oath before God. I don't know 
who this man is. Hmm. And after a little while, those standing there went to Peter and said, surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. So now Peter's in a dilemma. He knows what is about to happen to Jesus. And he has got to do something to convince these people that he is not a follower of Christ. Should he be identified, recognized as a follower of Christ, he himself might end up the same end that Jesus would have. So what would you think you would do to convince people that you are not a follower of Jesus? Something so shocking, so obvious that what you're about to say without a doubt would move any question as to whether you are or whether you are not a follower of Jesus. I wonder what you would think of. Well, listen to what Peter did. Then he began to call down curses. He's cussing like a sailor. He is dropping bombs. And as a result of that, everybody went, huh, there's no way he could have been with Jesus and talk like that. That's a good lesson for some Christians who think cussing your speech betrays you. Oh, it got very quiet in here. And then immediately a rooster crowed. And then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And the Bible says he went outside and he wept bitterly. See, Jesus said to Peter, Peter, you'll deny me three times. And he said to Peter, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. But fear not, Peter, I have prayed for you that your faith wouldn't fail. Peter, in his weakest moment, realized that Jesus loved him. Matter of fact, I wish I had time to open the scripture to you because there's another gospel that says when Peter, when those words came out of Peter's mouth, the cussing, Jesus looked at him and that says, and then when he saw Jesus, he wept bitterly. And I think when he saw Jesus, I think what he saw was nothing but just, Peter, I love you. I told you ahead of time this was going to happen. And I want you to look at me. I'm don't, I don't condemn you. I'm not mad at you. I warned you. I knew this would happen. Can I tell you, God knows everything about us before there's a word in our mouth. He already knows what it is, and he loves us regardless. Come on, somebody, give God some praise. Let me, let me read to you another piece of Scripture here. This is Jesus on the cross. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. And at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. The earth shook, rocks split, the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. And they came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. And when the centurion and those who were with him guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified. And they exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. Many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. And among them was Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. 
The veil in the temple was torn in two. For those of you who don't know what that means, in the Old Testament, every time you approach God, there was three sections of this tabernacle. There was the outer court, the inner court, and then what's called the Holy of Holies. No one went into the Holy of Holies, but a priest once a year for the atonement of man's sins and seeking forgiveness. If the priest was messing up, if the priest was doing things he shouldn't have been doing and hadn't sought forgiveness of sins in an appropriate manner, you cannot enter the Holy of Holies and survive because God is holy. And God, who is without sin, the creator of the... I want to describe it to you. It's like, you know, those bug zappers you've got and you see a bug flying and all of a sudden it lands on the zapper. The bug is fried toast because the bug can't survive the power and the energy of the bug zapper. Well, I'm not calling God a bug zapper, but he's holy, he's righteous, he's pure, he's all powerful, he is fullness of light, he is absolutely in him, there is no darkness, and we try to come into his presence. I remember Uriah tried to touch the ark of God and he tried to hold up the ark like God needs our help, we gotta prop him up. And the moment he touched it, it wasn't so much that God killed him out of anger. The brother died because he touched a source that was too powerful for him. Moses said, God, let me see your face. And God said, no one has seen my face and lived to survive it. Have you got it? God's just basically saying, can't touch this. You got it? Everybody got it? Say got it. Praise the Lord. I'm just filling in time because my iPad's having a fit. So it's in this veil between the Holy of Holies and the holy place or the inner court. They put a curtain there because if you went in, you're fried unless you do it the right way in the Old Testament. So much so that when a priest would go in, that scholars tell us, they would literally tie a rope to their leg. Because if somebody went in there and they didn't do it right, they're fried. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Does a good description of what that looks like. And so who's gonna go in and get him? If the priest isn't right, Who's going to go drag the priest's body out? So they tied a rope to his leg and just pulled the poor brother out and gave him a barrel. That veil that separated God from the rest of humanity at the foot of the cross, at the death of Jesus, was torn from top to bottom. And God said, I'm no longer living in a box anymore. I want to say to people, come in to the holy place. Jesus' death is sufficient. When Josh talks about the roof will fall in on you, it won't fall on you because the roof fell in on Jesus. God judged Jesus as a worthy sacrifice. And now it's come one, come all come boldly into the throne room of grace. I guess what I'm trying to say to you is Jesus is alive. Listen to this. Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection gives us victory over our sin. Can anybody say amen? Amen. If any man says he's without sin, he's a liar. And the truth is not in him. But if we confess our sin, then he is faithful and just 
Oh, hear the word just. God demanded justice, and Jesus took it all to forgive you of your sin and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. You see, this cross speaks to me about victory over sin. It speaks to me about victory over death. Oh, we're all going to die. That's depressing news, right? But we're all going to die. No one's going to escape the grave. We're all, I'll pray for you to be healed. I'll pray for you any and every time. But if you cannot embrace death, then your faith is not real. You cannot avoid the grave. It is inevitable. Jesus' death and Jesus' resurrection gives us victory and power over sin. It gives us power over death. It gives us power over hell. It gives us power over the devil. Amen. It gives us power over the world. Jesus overcame the world. And now he's given us the power to withstand the world and all its ungodly culture and twisted values and morals. It gives us power over shame. It gives us power over guilt. It gives us power over our past because if any man be in Christ, behold, he's a new creature. The old is gone and the new has come. Is anybody grateful for the cross today? You came to church. What did you expect me to say? It gives us power over sickness. I love those stories Josh was telling about people who were told medically it's impossible to have children, yet we pray for people regularly to see that dream fulfilled. You see, Romans chap sorry, Revelation chapter 1. Jesus said, I am the living one. I was dead. And now look, I'm alive forever and ever. And he says... I hold the keys of death and of hell. If you ever wondered, what did Jesus do between Friday and Sunday? On Saturday, the Bible says he descended into the depths of the earth to where is Hades, what is hell, and he took from the devil the keys of death and of hell. No longer will death hold you. No longer will hell hold you. But now Jesus has the keys. Possessing the keys of death means that the risen Christ has authority over death. Keys are authority. John chapter 10. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and the authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. You see, when Jesus died, he died according to to his own time. You see, Pilate thought he killed him. The soldiers thought it was their timing. The devil certainly thought it was his timing. He's the one that schemed behind the scenes and stirred up the crowd to cry, crucify him, crucify him. We want Barabbas free, but crucify him. It was Herod that said, do you not realize that I have within my power the power of life and death to choose? But no, Jesus said, I lay it down. In other words, I want to make it clear to you. He died according to his own timing when he gave up his spirit. Pilate, the Bible says, was surprised to hear that Jesus was already dead. Why? Pilate would have thought based on what he knows, it would have taken this long. But Jesus chose the timing, not Pilate. Jesus 
who has authority over death, has the unique power to give up his spirit and rise from the dead. Moreover, he has the authority, listen to this, to release you and I, his followers, from death. Come on, somebody. In order that we might be with him forever. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have all this world has to offer, but give me Jesus. More than treasure and more than gold. Give me Jesus. Oh, that I might know him. That I have gained, count all things that I have gained as lost. That I might know the wonderful mercy and the power and the majesty of Jesus, my risen Savior. You can have all this world has to offer, but I only want to know and worship him more than bread more than food I want the bread of life one thing I do is to know him you can have all the worldly passions and all its pursuits but I thank God that neither height nor depth nor angel nor demon nor principality nor power nor things present nor things to come nothing can separate me or you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Come on, somebody. You can have Hollywood supernatural. I want his power. You can have angels. I want his presence. You can have a creation. I want the creator. You can have what he spoke. I want to know his voice. You can have the book. I want the author. You can have his handiworks. I want his hand. You can have this temporal earth life. I want eternal life. You can have this world, but I want the one who spoke this world into being him. Come on, somebody. I wish I could describe him to you. He's alive. He's more alive. He's more real. He's more present. He's ever close. He's ever loving. He's more powerful, more wise, more knowledgeable. He is the King of kings, and he is the Lord of lords. He's my soon coming King. He is risen with healing in his wings. He comforts the disturbed. He heals the brokenhearted. He sets the captives free. He delivers. He saves. He restores. He renews. He makes all things new. There'll be a new heaven. There'll be a new earth. There'll be a new Jerusalem. There'll be a new body. There'll be new thinking. He is alive. I'll close with this thought. I talked to you a little bit about the Old Testament, the Holy Holies, the inner court, the outer court. Talked a little bit about that. But I think about some of the saints in the Old Testament. And two of them come to mind. Here's the first one. Praise the Lord. Got a massive walkout. Praise the Lord. That's the choir. They're coming back here. Looks like we just had a massive walkout in church. I think of Moses. I think the Bible says that when Moses did ask to see the glory of God, God said, listen to this. I want you to hear this. Moses, I'll make my goodness pass before you. God's glory is his goodness. And the Bible says from that moment on, he he actually put Moses in a cleft of a rock. He said, no one's seen my face and lived. Moses, you don't know what you're asking, but I'll do this for you. I'll walk by and I'll put my hand over the cleft of the rock so that this doesn't kill you. Remember the bug zapper? From that moment on, When Moses came back down the mountain, after he'd been with God, the Bible says his face shone 
with the glory of God. So bright was his countenance that he literally had to wear a veil because people couldn't look at him. If that's true of the Old Testament, how much more should be true of you and I in today's world? We who have open access to the throne room because the veil in the temple was torn in two and God says, I'm not living in a box anymore. I will dwell with men. I will walk with men. I will live within them. I know some Christians who are just mean, ugly. I don't mean physically ugly. I just, people say, I've been in the presence of God. I go, dude, go back. (laughs) I'll know when you've been in his presence. Because in his presence, there's fullness of joy. You're not done yet. I think of Daniel. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shake the bed, make the bed, and into bed we go. That's how I remember the names. That's all I remember from my Bible school days. That's it, Herb. That's all I got. And I love what the Scripture says about these Hebrew boys. Listen to me. Look at me. When the king looked at them and examined them, and compared them to the great knowledge of scholars and astrologers and the most brilliant minds in Babylon. He found them to be 10 times better than anyone. I wish I could describe him to you. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder, do you know him? My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He is enduringly strong. He is entirely sincere. He is eternally steadfast. He is imperially powerful and he's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He is the greatest phenomenon that has ever swept the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's the sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He is unparalleled and he is unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He is the highest personality in philosophy. He is fundamental doctrine of all truth in theology. He is the one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength to the weak. He's available to the tempted and the tribe. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and he sustains. He guides and he guards. He heals the sick and cleanses the lepers. He forgives the sinners. He discards his debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. His beauty is beyond measure. I wonder if you know him. He's the king of knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway to the deliverance. He's the pathway to peace. He's the roadway to righteousness. He's the highway to holiness. He's the gateway of glory. I wished I could describe him to you. His life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. He's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's simply irresistible. You can't get him out of your mind. You can't get him off of your hands. You can't outlive him and you can't live without him. 
Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found they couldn't stop him. Pilate found no fault in him, and Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. That's my king. Can I pray for you today? It's Easter Sunday. I couldn't think of a better day for someone to make a decision, to get right with God, to make your peace with God, than Easter Sunday. Other people might declare this day another day, but I'm declaring what it is. It's Jesus is risen. He loves you. He loves all people. He loves everyone. Can I pray for you? I'm not going to ask you to come to the front. I'm not going to ask you to even stand up, but I am going to ask you to do something today. Remember when we started this service and we had those water baptisms? The Bible says when Peter spoke, people's hearts were cut to the core. And I've been praying, God, please, today, let this be another Pentecost today. Let this be a day where, Father, you just take... The Bible says God chooses. If you're wondering, if you wonder, who do I think I am? Let me tell you who I think I am. The Bible says God chooses the foolishness of preaching to confound the wise. That's God's choice. It's not mine. And I know that God's called me to be a preacher. And He says it's the... God chooses the fool. If you wonder who I think I am, I'm the greatest fool that ever lived. Because God chooses the foolish of preaching and I will preach my Jesus. And I'm praying today that God would cut you to the heart if you don't know Him, that you would be touched and moved more than my words. But I know that God is backing up His Word because it's His Word. He loves you. He died for you. He has a future for you. He has a plan for you. But it starts with you making a decision. What do I have to do? What do I need to do? Well, He did it all. All you need to do is accept His love, His mercy, His grace, and His forgiveness. All over this building, in a moment, we're going to close our eyes. We're going to bow our heads. I almost said we're going to bow our heads and close our eyes. No. See, I tried to say that wrong and I couldn't. We're going to close our heads and bow our eyes. And when we do close our eyes, if today God's touching you, and I believe He is, I'm praying this is another day of Pentecost today. And you say, Steve, what must I do? Just like those early believers did in the New Testament. I'm just going to say to you what Peter said. Repent, turn away from your sin. Make a decision to follow Jesus. I'd love to pray for you. Look at me. I know it's a scary thought, but look at me. Could I pray for you? Could I pray for you? Could I have that wonderful privilege? Could I have that moment with you? And I'm going to ask you when we close our eyes, if you just so I know who I'm praying for, just lift your hand high enough and long enough for me to see you. And I'll know to include you in my prayer. Let's all close our eyes. Let's bow our heads. Friend, if I'm talking to you and you say, Steve, pray for me. Steve, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to get right with God without a moment of hesitation. Would you lift your hand right now all over the building? That's it. Many hands are being raised all over the building. Keep lifting them. Keep lifting them. There are so many. But come on, God's waiting for you. This is your moment. God bless you. Come on, who else? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All over the building. I'm looking for you right now. Say, Steve, my heart's been cut. My life's been touched. It's more than words. God Himself is making Himself real to me. And I, want, I need Him. I want Him. I want to become a follower of Jesus. Come on, anybody else, lift your hand all over the building. So many hands were raised. I'm waiting for anyone, anyone else. Lift it now. Lift it. It's never too late. 
beautiful, 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 beautiful. So many people. I think over 100 people have already lifted their hands. Come on, church. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Let's all pray this prayer. Everybody who lifted your hand, but we're all going to pray it with you, aren't we, church? Let's say this together. Lord Jesus, I ask you today to come into my life. I repent of my sin. And I ask you to make yourself real to me. I thank you, Jesus. You now live in me. I am now a follower of Christ. My sins are forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give the Lord one more hand. Stay with us here. Stay with us here. Everybody who lifted your hand, look at me now. Everybody who lifted your hand up there on the screen. I, I would love for you to get out your phone. If you don't have a phone, go out to the information counter and just let them know that you lifted your hand. We will give you a free book here that we wrote just for you. It's called The Christian Walk. I wrote it for you. You were the person I had in mind when I wrote this book. It's like, now that I've done this, how do I repent, be baptized? How do I become a follower of Christ? That's what this book is. It's simple steps of what you can do in that decision you made today. Or you can text us and we'll reach out here and let you know all about that. Amen. Praise the Lord. The team, oh, that book also will give you a Bible. Praise the Lord as well. If you go out to the information counter. Listen, if you don't have a Bible and you're a Christian, just ask them out there, can I have a Bible? We'll gladly give you one. We just want everyone to have the Word. We got one closing item that's going to happen. And then after that, I would encourage you to go get your kids and then take your kids out to this area. It's dried out. Jeff promised me the wind has blown, the sun has shone. And what happened on Friday with that rain, everything now is wonderful. So if it's a little damp out there, just go, Jeff, you were wrong. Praise the Lord. But now I'm told it's pretty good out there. So all sorts of fun. Happy Easter, everybody. Enjoy the team. Close the service and worship.
can you feel it too? All this tension growing strong. It's just a sign he's getting closer. He's already on the move. Come on, church, do you believe that today? The story has been written. The story has been written. One more time, Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your church. We thank you for our church that we get to call our home. God, I thank you for every person that is in this room. You see every single one of us. God, I thank you we leave today changed by your grace. God, I pray that you bless your people, every family, every individual, every business. Bless them this week. And everybody said? Amen. We love you, church. Thank you for being here. Don't forget next Sunday, 10 a.m., Grab your kiddos, head on out to the pavilion. We'll see you out there soon.